The switcher is capable of performing many of the effects that we see in television. A direct cut from one camera to the next. A fade out to black. A fade in. A dissolve from one camera to the next. and also another effect of superimposing one picture on top of another. In TV studio jargon, this is more commonly called a super. The audio circuits of a television studio are very similar to those of a radio studio, with the exception that more microphone inputs are generally required for TV stations doing a lot of studio productions. The audio engineer is in charge of the audio portion of the program. Through the facilities of the telephone company, the audio and video signals are delivered by cable from the studio to the television transmitter, which is located at a higher elevation, if possible, in another part of the city. Some stations use a microwave system for the link between studio and transmitter. The television transmitter performs the functions of taking the audio and video signals from the studio and modulating them onto radio frequency carriers and then amplifying them to a high power level in order that they may be radiated into space by the antenna so that many hundreds of thousands of television receivers may be able to receive the signals. One engineer is required to be on duty here and perform certain functions. The transmitter engineer must see to it that the audio and video signals are fed to the transmitter at the proper amplitude so that the audio and video carriers will be properly modulated. Too much modulation will cause the signal to become badly distorted and too little will cause the picture to appear weak and washed out on a receiver. A log is maintained and every half hour certain meter readings must be recorded. Plate voltage, plate current, percentage of total power output, standing wave ratio and others. A check is also made to be certain that the transmitter is operating within the allowable tolerances of the station's assigned frequency. This also is recorded in the log. Before the audio and video signals are fed to the transmitter itself, they go through various amplifiers, control circuits, and monitoring circuits. A video patch panel is used here so that in the event of equipment failure, the signal can be rerouted to the transmitter. The video signal passes through line amplifiers, isolation, distribution, and stabilizing amplifiers, a phase compensator, and other corrective circuits before finally reaching the transmitter. The video signal is carefully checked at various points along the way to see that everything is operating properly. Using the oscilloscope, we study the horizontal blanking and sink pulse. We measure the duration of the front porch. We see that the rise time of the sink pulse does not exceed 0.25 microseconds. The width of the sink pulse is measured, as is the length of the back porch. Vertical synchronization is a little more complicated. It is checked to see that there are exactly six equalizing pulses both before and after the serrated sink pulse. The width of the equalizing pulses and the serrations in the sink pulse are also measured. The transmitter itself is actually two transmitters. One section is for audio and one for video. The audio signal is transmitted as frequency modulation and the video is transmitted as amplitude modulation. A crystal oscillator is used in the exciter stage, followed by a series of multipliers to bring the carrier up to the proper frequency. This is followed by more amplifiers to bring the carrier's power up to a higher level. This amplifier is capable of amplifying the carrier up to a level of 10,000 watts. Following this amplifier, the signal goes to the final amplifier, which is capable of delivering 50,000 watts of power at its output. The final amplifier uses these tubes, each being capable of delivering 10,000 watts. Five of these tubes are used in the final amplifier connected in a parallel arrangement. 
From the final amplifier, the signal is fed by means of a heavy coaxial transmission line to the vestigial sideband filters. Finally, the resultant signal is carried up the tower and to the antenna where it is radiated into space and received by hundreds of thousands of television receivers in people's living rooms all over the countryside. We have been on a tour of a television station and we have seen the operations of studio cameras, the film projectors, the film cameras in the projection room, the videotape recorder, and some of its fundamentals. We have seen how all of these pieces of equipment are tied together in the control room, which is the nerve center of the television studio. And we have seen the operation of the video switcher. We have touched lightly on the operation of the transmitter and the duties of the transmitter engineer and how the signal is finally radiated into space where it is available for reception by your receiver at any time. All of these operations at the studio and transmitter occur in a fraction of a second and appear almost instantaneously as a complete picture on your TV screen. This is the miracle of television.